Hello, hello, this is Aubrey Birch with Easy School Marketing, and I am so excited to have my friend and colleague here, Joe Monzo of Monzo Media Productions. Thank you for joining us, Joe. I would love for you to tell everyone a little bit about yourself and what you do for schools. Yeah, well, well, thanks so much for having me, Aubrey. You know, there's the the short answer, and then there's the long answer. But I'll give the short answer. But I have a video production company, Monza Media Productions, and we create compelling videos for schools and nonprofits to help drive their retention, fundraising goals, all that good stuff. And we've been in business for about five-ish years or so officially. And I've just always had such a, a deep passion for the independent school realm. I came from independent school myself. So I, I've, I've experienced it firsthand almost throughout my entire learning career. And I just had such a wonderful experience that, you know, for me, creating videos for schools is how can we showcase and tell these school stories for other families who, you know, who may be looking for for alternative schools and, and help them achieve their goals for their child, for their their, their educational life and also beyond. Absolutely. That's so powerful. I mean, just first of all, your story, but also what you do, because I think when I'm working with clients, we're looking at how to tell that story. And sometimes the easiest way is through video. I mean, the, the emotional response you can get from a video. I still get teary eyed from watching the humane society commercials and like stuff like that. Yeah. I'm like, I've got to help. <laughs> the, the animals or, you know, it makes you want to take action and the power of video is amazing. So I think there's a lot to really unpack here, but I'd love to hear your thoughts on how schools can really leverage video to attract and retain their students and families, especially in, in this year as we're heading, hopefully out of COVID, but still we're, we're dealing with some definitely wanting to keep the families we love and attract new ones that really could use our school and their families could benefit from what we have to offer. Yeah. Well, so I think, you know, the big thing is, you know, it's, as you mentioned, it's about the story. It's, it, it's really about using the medium to your maximum potential. And there is something about video where it's, it's pretty much the closest thing to an in-person conversation or an in-person experience that allows people who view it to experience those emotions. So for me, it's always just been about, you know, how do you utilize the medium to its maximum potential? That doesn't mean you have to make a Steven Spielberg film, but it does mean that you need to pull on the heartstrings. And it doesn't necessarily mean it has to be some sappy, you know, TV ad or anything like that. It just needs to get people to feel excited, feel joy, feel hope. And so for me, it's, you know, I've kind of layered it into two elements for creating good enrollment and retention videos. And the first one is what is the experience? What's the experience like at the school? And secondly, what is the outcome of attending the school? Because a lot of families, you know, they're probably paying some pretty, pretty big tuitions and, you know, they will pay it if they know that they're going to get both the experience and the results slash outcome. So those are probably the two big things that you want to focus on when creating your videos is what's the experience and what is the outcome? And you can do it in a way that's cost efficient. You can do it in a way I've seen some pretty successful videos where people are, you know, they just grab their iPhone and, you know, they just kind of let the person be themselves and they just tell their story. And really, you know, that's, again, it's all about just pulling at the heartstrings. That's fantastic. And I always talk to my clients and I always say, sell the end product, right? It's the same thing. You're saying, give them a, a view, a glimpse into the future so that they can imagine their child in that situation. I know as a mom, when I was touring schools, the thing that sold me was not the immediate program that my child was enrolled into. It was actually talking to the seventh and eighth grader at that school. My children were three at the age three at the this time. And they were like so articulate. They were kind. They were, they knew all sorts of things. And I was just blown away. I was like, wow, you know, yes. And yes, where's my, where do I put my deposit? You know? And I think what you're saying is similar is that you want to sell the experience. And also, you know, what is the, what's the end result? Like what do people have to look forward to and why should they invest? sometimes this very large amount of money. 
Yeah. And it's, you know, it's one of those things where sometimes one of the biggest challenges that I've seen schools do is, or, you know, that, that they have problems with is kind of articulating that. And that's where it's important to, to have a really good story structure, not necessarily a script. In fact, I almost say, you know, ditch the script because it, it just comes across really, you know, fake and all unauthentic, but really, again, just keep asking questions. When, you know, if, if you're interviewing people, uh, a student, a family, you know, what is the experience like, you know, how was science class? What'd you learn in science? Or, you know, what was the biggest takeaway that you learned in, in Mrs. Wilson's history class? You know, whatever it is. And so really just diving into those emotional things is, is really going to be important. You know, the history and, you know, the, the facts per se, they're good. They should be on the website. You may or may not need to include them in the video or videos. They may be something where it's like, you know, you show shots of them and in, in, in B-roll shots, but, you know, your value proposition is not so much, well, we have small class sizes. A lot of independent schools have small class sizes. You have to go kind of beyond that and really kind of showcase, you know, why is it that a family should invest in you? And that will be tailored to the experience and the uh, outcome. That's great. And yes, it was silently laughing at what you said about small size class sizes. I'm like, in, in great communities, right? Yes. <laughs> small class sizes and great communities. So, and, I, and, and I've been in small class sizes. So like, you know, my math class, I had four kids in my math class in 11th and 12th grade. So like, I, you know, I can totally relate that you want to showcase, you know, that it's small class and it's, you, you should showcase it, but it's not your value proposition. Mm -hmm. It's like, it, I often see on websites, like just the bulleted points, like small class sizes, you know, strong community. But like what you're saying is really showing, showing the experience, which yes, of course includes small class sizes, but it's, it's really getting at the heart of what is that school experience? What is that the mission and the value proposition that that school has to offer? So and it could be very subtle. So like, you know, the, there are times, you know, like when we're filming for clients and we're filming B-rolls of teachers interacting with students and we're getting like some close-ups and, you know, you can see the kids just like slightly or sometimes, you know, majorly smile if they're, if they're you know, if they know they're on camera, they'll probably smile a little bit more. But, but there's a lot of subtleties that you can kind of get away with video. There's, you know, there's either the parent on camera who's giving their testimonial, the student on camera giving their testimonial, the B-roll shots of the kids just kind of doing their thing, they're learning. There's a lot of subtleties and nuances that can really go into video that a lot of other mediums don't really have that ability. So again, that's just one of, you know, the many perks of utilizing the medium to its maximum potential. Yes. And we were talking off camera about that parent testimonial, how powerful that is. I see it, even though I'm not going to a school, but I'm looking at their video for, for marketing purposes, I will often get teary eyed watching these parent testimonials. And can you explain a little bit about what we talked about before about like what you see when you're filming a parent testimonial and why it's so important? Yeah. Well, so I think initially the goal is for, you know, you want to get that social proof. You want to be able to showcase, yes, these are what other families go through, you know, especially if you're in a very similar, in a similar demographic or, or target market. And so, something that's kind of caught my eye, particularly in this recent shoot that we did before lockdowns began was this is also a great way to help families, you know, with retention. So, and it's interesting because I've even felt it myself whenever I'm interviewing and doing, you know, my own video testimonials, but for families, when they come in and they're telling about their story about, you know, maybe things were challenging before they went to your school and they decided to take this leap of faith and, you know, the child or children have seen transformations in a positive way. Their grades are, are improving. They're making friends. They're, you know, they've learned a passion. And what's interesting when a parent is, is talking about that experience, you know, they're remembering what it was like before and maybe things weren't good. And so now those emotions could potentially flood. And it's one of those things where you might not have expected to have a, uh, a video testimonial that was for retention, but now you actually have one 
from not really the final product, but from the experience, remember that word experience of going through that video testimonial. Cause now the, cause now the parent is like, wow, I, I, I almost, well, it's not so much that they forgot, but like, I really remembered, you know, what it was like before and how this, how, how this school environment has helped my child. So something like that could just be super powerful. And, you know, it, it helps with, it helps with getting them re-engaged into the community. And, you know, I just think they're so powerful from the initial concept of doing a, a, a parent testimonial to the filming of the parent testimonial and ultimately, you know, the, the end result, because then you can really tell that story and really showcase that story uh, in a really powerful way. Yeah. So not only is it retention for the parent who's actually telling the testimonial, because when you're verbally processing, like, the emotions that you went through, sometimes you didn't realize, oh, wow, actually that was a huge difference. And wow, I hadn't even thought about that in a while. Right. So you're doing that, but you're also like a lot of people who watch videos, see that their child in a parent's story, like, even though they relate, they're like, oh, wow, that sounds a lot like my child, Billy. I, you know, I, you're right. This school has, has a tremendous impact on my child and, you know, so on and so forth, which helps with retention. So it's, it's fantastic. And it's such a good use of video. And I, I'm, I've seen it work wonders at other schools. So I'm grateful that you brought that up. Now, before we end this, I'd love to hear from you, like any parting words to schools about like the use of videos or how you see them moving forward past COVID, like, should people be keeping their mask videos? Should they be shooting mask videos? Like I just interested in your, yeah. in your take on this. Yeah. Well, so, you know, if you're on the fence about even doing any sort of video because the masks are still on, I would say, go ahead and shoot them because, you know, we're actually getting ready to do like, I think like 12 or 13 videos for a new private school. And what we're going to do is we're, you know, we're going to let the interview, the people being interviewed, you know, they can keep their masks off so they can talk. But then obviously for all, like all the B-roll scenes, the students will still have to wear their masks because they're, because they're still in school and, and stuff like that. But once the masks kind of come off, all we really need to do is just replace the B-roll. We have the story there, the story structure is there. And now what you could actually do is just put a, 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 a little shot list together, be like, all right, you know, we want this scene to go at, you know, minute 127 and this clip be at the beginning to replace, you know, the mask wearing stuff. So I would say, don't let COVID prevent you from creating compelling content. I think it's going to say a lot when prospective families and even, you know, the families who are still here, they're going to recognize that you care about the brand and that you care about what other people think and showcasing people with masks on, showcasing that, you care about the student's health and not that not that I have any doubt that other schools don't I, I think everyone does but it's one of those things where you know kind of the seeing is believing type deal and you're able to really you know showcase it in a way that obviously you can't do it in person if you know if you're not doing on on campus tours so I would say don't let COVID stop you from creating compelling content keep it up and just make sure you have a solid strategy and foundation I have a blog article about the seven videos that school should have, but there's also a little bit of seven mistakes that school should avoid when filming and creating content. So that's something to kind of think about, you know, try to make sure that you're not shooting just one video at a time, try to get, you know, wrap everything into, in, into one shoot as much as possible. So just be strategic about it. That's what I would say. Be strategic, showcase the experience and showcase the result. I love it. That's great. I think I, there, was, there was so much there that I think people will find a value. Thank you so much, Joe, for being here today and having this little coffee chat or water chat since we're both yeah. at in the afternoon. So our coffee is over. Where can people find you? So people can find me on both LinkedIn. So I'm, I'm, I'm fairly active on LinkedIn. So right at Joe Monzo. And then my website is www.monzomediaproductions.com where you can check out samples. You can check out some of our blogs, some of our testimonials, all that good stuff. But those are the two big places that you can find me at. All right. Thank you. And thanks for all you do for schools. Yes. Well, thank you very much for having me. <laughs> Take care. Bye. Bye-bye.